Hey guys, welcome to my first video on YouTube. Uh, in this guide, I want to show you how to set up a Docker container, bring it to the web, and equip it with SSL certificates so that you can access it through HTTPS and all of that for free. Only requirement is that you have a VPS, so a virtual private server or any other type of server. To get started, we first connect to that server, for example, through a VS Code. And my server here is configured as Hostinger, the uh, server provider. I connect to the server and then I um, choose the folder where I want to start the project. In that case, I created a little folder called guides and set up SSL Nginx Docker. These are the technologies we are using. So I'm opening the folder and in this folder, we will then go ahead and create a Docker Compose file. With Docker Compose, we can define the names of our containers and ports and so on in a YAML format so that we can, for example, move the Docker Compose file to another server and just execute the same infrastructure. First of all, we will um, create a little container called Hello World and it basically is just a little website. We um, yeah, define it inside the Docker Compose file. It, this is the container itself. That's the name of the container, the image we are using, and the port mapping. In this case, from port 8000 to 80, so that this container is available under the IP address of the server. We can then simply run docker compose up minus d. Minus d is just means that it's in a detached mode so that uh, we don't see all of the logs. Um, we can then go to the domain of the server. Uh, I visited already a couple of times and that's how it looks. The next step is to set up Nginx. For that, we will create a file nginx.conf inside an Nginx container. And we will add the following configuration. First events, it's needed for the Nginx configuration. And then a HTTP section with a server that represents um, yeah, our location. Uh, we here listen on port 80, so the default HTTP port. And then on the default location, we uh, create a proxy to our container hello world under the port 8000. The container hello world is this one and 8000 is the port exposed by the container because the nginx container will be created in the same network we have to access it through this and that's already the next step so we now create the we now create the nginx container and we remove the port section of uh, hello world because that's what we want to get rid of with our reverse proxy and here you can see again we create the container nginx we have a container name we always want to restart that container we use the uh, image nginx and we have port mappings for the default http port and the default https port so for free and then we have a volume nginx 
nginx-conf to this path. And this is basically that we map this file into the container. So now we can build both of these container and we will see, oh, uh, yeah, that something sometimes happens when you, <laughs> when you copy uh, the code over. Uh, the next thing that we can see is nothing <laughs> because it's still, or should still be the same. Hmm. Yeah. And the only thing that changed now is that we don't access the container immediately, but we access the container through Nginx. So we send a request to Nginx and it creates a forwarding to our container itself. That's what a reverse prox proxy does. So now that we have set up our reverse proxy, let's start setting up SSL, so HTTPS. And for that, we are using Let's Encrypt. Let's Encrypt is a free service that lets us um, create certificates. For that, we have to create a uh, another location in our HTTP section. And that section is called well-known ACME challenge. And in this path, there will be a file that Let's Encrypt will read and run a challenge against. And if the file is correct, we get an SSL certificate. The challenge file will be placed in this uh, directory and therefore we need to add new volumes inside our inside our nginx container. Um, besides um, placing these two new volumes, we also need to create another container. It's called certbot and it's basically a service that takes care of the of creating this challenge file and so on for Let's Encrypt. So it's just like a service to make it easier for you. Um, here we have another image, certbot, certbot, container name, certbot. The volumes are the same ones as in Nginx. So basically that they can communicate with each other. So Zbot places, for example, later the SSL certificates in this directory. In addition, it, we specify a command and it basically said that we want the certificate only and we use the web root method inside this directory that we also specified here. And if it already exists, we want to renew it. And then our email, to that email, we will get sent um, information when the certificate will run out, for example. I will specify mine. And then uh, the, the domain, that's what we want the container to be accessible through. So that is the specification in uh, Zbot. Then we can, can run this, but before we can do this, we need to specify a, a record inside uh, our domain provider. For me, that is Hostinger, so as with the server. And yeah, I will show you now how to do this. So we are in the domain overview. Should work pretty similar for all the other domain hosts, but if you want to use hosting as well, uh, there's also a link in the description. So the next step is that we specify an A record and we need to do so for the IP of the server. And it's, yeah, 
that's basically it. We have the type A record, we have the name, in this case add to point um to not have a subdomain but the domain itself. So pgnt.xyzz. We point it to our server and time to live. So then we add that record. DNS record created successfully. And then after a short while it should be should be accessible through that. Check again. Okay. PG anti. I have a little typo in here. <laughs> Good that I realized. Um yeah. So what happens if we go to that domain? Okay. It's um yeah, is access is the same as when I type the normal domain, so that's what we want. The next step is to get the SSL certificate. For that, we run docker compose up minus D again, or let's run it like this, docker compose up, so that we can see uh, line 15. Okay, I <laughs> don't know what that is, to be honest, but yeah, let's try again. This time we go in the attached mode so that we see the logs. And in the logs, we should see that the certificate is issued. Yeah, it starts now. We see requesting a certificate for that domain. And then we can see that here are get requests to the challenge file. And then we see you successfully received certificate and it is located in etc. That in Let's encrypt live pgnt. That is this directory here. So now we can stop this and create the last nginx config. And here the idea is that I have a return 301 to https. So basically, that all requests sent to my server are sent to HTTPS so that it's not accessible through HTTP anymore. In here, we then have to, we have to change a few things, basically everything that includes domain. Um, yeah, so we have our basic server still, it listens on 80, redirects to, to HTTPS. And here we have the HTTPS section. And in here, we redirect to our Hello World container again. And yeah, here we have the challenge for the renewals. And that's basically it. So let's save. Let's uh, recreate the containers, the container. And yeah, let's see if we get an SSL certificate. I will skip that part because it usually takes a few seconds till the SSL certificate is visible. So see you then. <laughs> okay, and as you can see now, the HTTPS certificate is there and we can access our Docker container through SSL. And we didn't have to pay anything for the SSL certificate. That's awesome. Now that we can access our container for SSL, we don't want to lose that. And for that, we will now have a look on how to auto renew the SSL certificates because let's encrypt certificates are only valid for 90 days and then have to be renewed. And that's actually pretty simple. We can just use cron for that and we think before we can start with that, we first have to find out where our Docker binary is located. Here, it's in user bin Docker. And then we can edit our cron commands with cron tab minus E. So we do that and we go in here. I already prepared the command and it basically says that I want to run this at every zero minute, every 5 a.m. 
on the first of the month and every second month in every year. And we want to run docker compose with the file root guides docker compose up and we want to recreate only third bot. So that's why we write third bot here. And we can try that command as well to see if it will work inside of cron. So we exit the file and we run that command. And now we see, okay, the container is created. I canceled that because I don't want to recreate my certificate. It's already there. Yeah. Um, I have to say it's like a, a lot of manual work you have to do in, in the scenarios. And it's good to know the basics for that. But in one of the next videos, I will show you how to basically completely automate this process and yeah it will be in a series of multiple videos on how i set up my vps i hope this guide was helpful and if there are any questions feel free to ask and if you want to maybe present your side projects or have any other questions regarding any topic you can also Join my Discord community and ask there if you want. So thank you very much for watching that vi the video till now and have a good day. Bye.